Okay, this is exam four for physics 202. Uh, first, a few multiple choice. The current travels through the wire is shown. What is the direction of the force on the wire? Let your index finger go in the direction of I. They fold towards, or your middle finger goes towards B, and that gives you the force to the left. Coil of copper wire is shown here. What is the initial direction of rotation for the coil? Well, let's consider this. I have my current coming out of the page, my magnetic field in this direction and so current out of the page uh, magnetic field to the right that means it's going to be up so the force here is up that's going to cause a clockwise rotation and then up here I have this charge traveling towards this wire first I want to figure out what is the direction of the magnetic field <coughs> excuse me what is the direction of the magnetic field so my velocity vector is in that direction, my force vector is in that direction. So if V is down, that means that the magnetic field is into the page on that side, and it's going to be out of the page on that side, and so a, a current that goes to the left will give you a magnetic field like that. Let my thumb go in the direction of the current here, my fingers go into the page on this side and out of the page on this side. This figure shows two wires, each of which has a current I at point P. Which of the arrows shows the direction of the net magnetic field? So I have two things here. This one's into the page, so my magnetic field is clockwise, like that. And this one's, uh, and so up here, the magnetic field will be like that. And the other one is out of the page, so my magnetic field will be um, counterclockwise. And so up at this point P, it's going to be in that direction. So the net magnetic field is going to be in that direction. So B is the right answer. Alright, an unknown particle accelerated an electric field to a speed of 3 million meters per second, that's V. Particle encounters a magnetic field of 2 tesla, that's B, and a radius of 0.05 meters, that's R. What is the sign of the charge, first of all? Well, uh, consider my velocity is in that direction. The force just looking at the trajectory is downward and if the force is downward that means that the let's see my th velocity that means that the magnetic field should be out of the page so that tells me that this has to be a negative charge so for part a it's negative q for part b what is the ratio of the mass to charge for the unknown particle this is mass spectrometer so i say uh, qvb equals mv squared over r. The magnetic force is a centripetal force. And I can get rid of that and that. And I saw for mass to charge, mass to charge ratio is uh, what br over v. Putting in my values that I have for that, b is 2 times 0.05 divided by v, which is uh, 3 million, 3 times 10 to the 6. When I get that, I get a mass to charge ratio of uh, 3.3 times 10 to the minus 8. That's going to be in kilograms per coulomb. And then you would go and you would uh, compare that to known mass to charge ratios. All right, a current of 2 amps. I just want to know uh, what is the magnitude of the torque. A torque is equal to NBIA. Sine of theta is parallel though, we'll just get rid of that sine theta term. N is 1, there's only one turn of wire. The magnetic field is 1 tesla. The current is 2 amps. Uh, the area is going to be pi r squared, pi times 2 squared. So that's four, uh, 8 times pi. Looks like I missed something here. Uh, No, that's right. Yeah, so uh, one, 1 tesla, 2 amps. Yeah, so 4 times pi, excuse me, not 4 times pi, 8 times pi, and uh, that's equal to 25 newton meters is the answer. All right, go back to my blue here. Number seven, okay, so we're dealing with an LC circuit and an inductor and a capacitor. The angular frequency here, the angular frequency, omega, is uh, 1 over root LC or root of 1 over LC, either it's the same. That's going to be 1 over the root of 2 times 1. 
or 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2 is 0.71 radians per second. And then in B, I want to know what is the maximum value of the current. Well, I know that the magnetic field energy is equal to the electric field energy. So I say 1 half Li squared is equal to 1 half Q squared over C. That is the maximum energy that's stored in the capacitor in the electric field is equal to the maximum energy that's stored in the inductor, not at the same time, but you remember they switched them back and forth. And so I can solve this for I. It'll be Q squared over LC. Square root of that. Uh, Q, well, I got 10 volts on 1 farad, so Q is equal to C times V, or 10 microcoulombs. And so this is going to be the square root of 10 squared, divided by L, divided by C, that's divided by 2 times 1, that's the square root of 50, which is what, 7 point something? Um, 7.1 amps. Alright, so that is my part B. Part C, what is the time when the current is at its maximum value? So remember that in this, my current is starting at zero, and it follows this sine function, right? I is equal to I max sine of omega t. And so my current maximum is at this point, and this occurs when omega t is equal to pi over 2. Don't forget your unit circle here because we've got 0, pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and the sine function is equal to 1 when that value for omega t is equal to pi over 2. So all I have to do is just say omega t is equal to pi over 2 and then I solve that for t. So that's going to be pi over 2 omega. Well, I've already found the angular frequency, that's omega, it's 0.71. So it's pi over 2 times 0.71. And that is equal to uh, 2.2 seconds. Now part D, in part D I want to know what is the charge at t equal 2 seconds. So Q equals what at t equal 2 seconds? Let's look on our equation sheet and we find that, oh, sorry, Q is equal to Q max times the cosine of omega t. And that's going to be uh, 10 coulombs, that's C times V, we found that earlier, times the cosine of 0.71 times 2 seconds. Be very careful here that your calculator be in radian mode when you're dealing with this because this omega t is in radians, right? 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2. That's in measured in radians. And getting that, if I have my mode correct, I don't think I did. Let me try this. Uh, I get 10 times I get 1.5 coulombs. Yeah, 1.5 coulombs. Be careful that it's in radian mode. Yeah, okay. So uh, 1.5 coulombs is the answer there. In this figure, magnetic field through the loop changes according to this function. And the radius of the loop is 2 meters, and the resistance is 4 ohms. What is the magnitude of the EMF at t equal 2 seconds? Well, this is Faraday's law. So the EMF is equal to the negative of n d phi dt. n is just 1 here, so I'll just leave that out. It's just equal to the negative of d phi dt. Phi, remember, that's the magnetic flux, is equal to b times A, and it's only my B that's changing, so I can change this to negative A times dB dt. It's more common to change the magnetic field than to change the area. Actually, it's more common to change the angle, right? We talked about this in generators, that when you change the angle, you also induce an EMF. Uh, that's negative pi r squared times dB dt. That function becomes, when I take the derivative of it, 6t plus 4. 
So I get negative pi times the radius of my loop, and the loop is uh, 2 meters times 6 times the time, which is uh, 2 seconds plus 4. So that's 16, excuse me, not 16, 4 pi times uh, 12 times 16. That has a value equal to about 200 volts. So my EMF is 200 volts. It has a negative there, but doesn't have a whole lot of meaning right now. That's the next part of the question. I was really just asking for the magnitude here anyway. So 200 volts is the answer. If you put the negative, I didn't count off. What is the magnitude and direction of the current? Well, to find the magnitude, I just use Ohm's law. I equals V over R, 200 volts over the resistance, which was 4 ohms. That's equal to 50 amps. Now I want to know what is the direction of the current. Well, look, my magnetic field is increasing. So the induced magnetic field is going to be opposite the direction of the increasing magnetic field. So my induced magnetic field inside this loop is going to be out of the page. So now consider our right-hand rule for an induced for a magnetic field created by a loop of wire. The induced magnetic field is going to be generated by a current that is in the counterclockwise direction. Remember, thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers wrap around, get, the fingers would wrap around coming out of the page in the middle of that. So the answer there is going to be 50 amps in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so for this circuit, what is the equilibrium current? Okay, well, that's easy. It's just I equals V over R because at equilibrium, the inductor just becomes a piece of wire. So that's just going to be 10 over 1 or 10 amps. That's my maximum current. B, how long does it take to reach that current? Well, just like with resistors, it's going to be 10 times the time constant, except this is my inductive time constant. That's 10 times L over R. 10 times L, which is 2 over 1, equals to 20 seconds. The, time, the 10 comes from just 10 times the time constant. That's characteristic of exponential growth functions. How long does it take to reach one half this current? Well, uh, I is equal to I max, which I already know is equal to 10 amps, or I equilibrium, times 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. And I want to know what is T. So uh, here, I over I max is going to be 0.5. Or you can say 5 over 10 is equal to 1 minus E to the minus T over tau. Letting tau equal 2 seconds. And you can solve this for T. And I'll leave you to do this. But you solve it for T, and you find that T is equal to 1.4 seconds. So it takes 1.4 seconds to reach half that current. And then when it's at this current, what is the energy stored by the inductor? We've seen this already, but the energy, U, by the inductor in the magnetic field is 1 half Li squared. That's going to be 1 half of the inductance, which is 2 Henrys times 5 amps squared is 25 joules. Sketch plots of charge or current versus time for the following circuits. Current versus time for an LR circuit just after the battery is connected. It starts out at zero and increases like that. Exponential growth. Charge versus time for an LC circuit. This is a circuit that has a capacitor and an inductor where the capacitor is fully charged initially. So it's going to start with a big charge and it's going to oscillate back and forth. Okay, energy will go from the capacitor to the inductor, from the inductor to the capacitor, and back and forth. And then an LRC circuit is where I have a capacitor, a resistor, that's the R, my inductor, that's the L. Uh, it's going to start out big, capacitor is initially charged, it's going to decrease, and it's going to follow this sinusoidal, but it's going to rapidly decrease by that exponential decay function. Uh, I drew it incorrectly here. Let me redraw it because the frequency doesn't change.
there we go, something like that, but it's going to drop off as you're going to have this exponential decay function overlaid upon it. The final question, wire has current of 1 amp, uh, magnetic field is 2k Tesla, and shown F is IL cross B. It's going to be 1 amp. Now we need to figure out what is L. Well, L is going to be equal to, uh, in the x direction, it goes from 2 to 7, so that's 5i. In the y direction, it goes from 5 to negative 1 minus 6j. So it's 5i minus 6j crossed with uh, the magnetic field, which is 2k. I can just leave this off since it's equal to 1. I get 10 I cross K minus 12 J cross K. I can draw my coordinate system here if I need to think about what these I, J, K cross products are. And it turns out that I cross J, I cross K is equal to negative J, so I get negative 10 J minus j cross k, which is i, positive i, I get minus 12i, minus 10j minus 12i, that's the force measured in newtons. All right, so that's the it. Um, a lot of points on the test, there were more, more more free response, and actually there was an extra five points built in, so that was sort of like a, a, a built-in bonus.